Hi everyone, this is Ajit Dababa from Nightlight Astrology. It is Monday, January 13th, and today I'm making a brief sneak preview of my upcoming workshop series on the nodes of the moon in ancient astrology. So this Thursday night, and for three consecutive Thursday nights in a row, I will be offering a workshop series on the nodes of the moon in ancient astrology. Um, it starts at 7 p.m. Eastern time, uh, that's USA, on Thursday night, and it meets at the same time, three consecutive Thursdays in a row. The sessions are recorded, so if you can't make it live, you'll receive the audio video if you register. Um, the three consecutive weeks will cover three different topics, which I'll go over in a moment. First, I want to tell you about the series and a little bit about of, of the purpose behind doing this series. So I've called this uh, seminar series Ancient Astrology and the Nodes of the Moon. And the subtitle is The Evolution of the Soul from the Perspective of Ancient Astrology. So why am I doing this? Because... When I started studying ancient astrology and started shifting my practice to um, adopt the techniques of Hellenistic and Indian astrologers and eventually medieval astrology and things like that, um, one of the big shifts that occurred for me was in my understanding of the nodes of the moon. I would say it was the most practical, most valuable, most startling, exciting change in my perspective on astrology. The reason for that is that um, one of the maybe most popular schools of astrology in the modern era is called the school of evolutionary astrology. And there's not just one, there's many different sort of forms and uh, branches on the tree of evolutionary astrology. Um, this is not a series that's meant to bash evolutionary astrology at all, but I, I do want to draw some contrasts because uh, modern evolutionary astrology's view on the nodes of the moon, which are very popular, turns out is very, very different from what ancient astrologers believed and practiced. Now, for me, learning about those differences was revolutionary. It, it literally changed my life because I was practicing evolutionary astrology for like the first four years of my practice. And this was one of the most pivotal changes in mind and heart for me as a practitioner. Um, I believe that if more modern astrologers learn about these differences, regardless of if one adopts them or not, that they'll be a more well-rounded astrologer and will have a deeper appreciation for the field of astrology as a whole. So I invite anyone, regardless of your astrological commitments, or even if you don't haven't defined them already, um, to come out and check this talk out. Um, I will certainly be making my case as to why I've adopted the ancient perspective and philosophy on the nodes of the moon. Um, but again, my uh, you know, my intention is to have this be informative and interesting for astrologers of, of all kinds, even those who are already completely married to, you know, modern evolutionary astrology. In modern evolutionary astrology, the basic idea goes like this. Uh, the soul is evolving lifetime from lifetime to lifetime on its return to God. Um, and um, as it goes along in the birth chart, the nodes of the moon tell us about the karmic trajectory of the lifetime. I'm putting this in my own words. And the south node of the moon will represent some of the gifts and things we're familiar with from the past, but mostly, you know, hangups that we have to be very careful of uh, getting over. And the north node will represent things that we're cultivating uh, or developing like your evolutionary homework. Go in the direction of the north node is the mantra of most modern evolutionary astrology. So in this series, um, Basically, what we're going to be learning is that this is a brand new belief and brand new practices surrounding this belief about the nodes of the moon uh, that have occurred in just like the past hundred years or so. And um, what we'll be doing is just saying, and let's actually, so let's take a look at where that came from, maybe how it evolved or developed, um, and then call it into question uh, specifically as we look at what ancient astrologers uh, in India, who are the sort of original karmic technicians, said about karma, said about the soul, and said about the nodes of the moon. And then we'll also be looking at what ancient Western Hellenistic astrologers said about the moon and how they use the nodes of the moon in practice. And then we'll just be showing, uh, as we move along through the three parts of this series, how the nodes of the moon from the ancient perspective can be utilized in charts today. I'll be giving lots of demos and show you how I've implemented the traditional view of the nodes of the moon into my practice and how it's changed my relationship also to the perspective of the soul, enlightenment, karma, and so forth. So um, three parts to this series. The first one is called Karma, Enlightenment, and the Soul in Ancient Astrology. That's this Thursday night. Um, 
in this class, we will be looking at the basic set of beliefs in modern astrology surrounding the nodes of the moon. I just outlined it briefly with the north and south node, but it's a little deeper than that. So we'll be looking at that. We'll be tracing where that comes from in, in some respects. And then we will be um, also jumping back in time and then talking about what did the, the original um, astrologers who talked about karma and enlightenment and evolution in relation to the birth chart in India, what did they say about karma? It's not just one thing that they said, but what were some of the things that they said about karma and the nodes of the moon and how are they different? How are they similar? Um, and then how did they use the nodes of the moon? It turns out they use the nodes of the moon in a very, very different way. And then we'll be also looking at Greco-Roman uh, philosophy, the, the, the Greco-Roman um, era of astrology, which spanned a, a huge part of the world and um, has its, its roots in ancient Egypt and so forth. But we'll be looking at the philosophy of the nodes of the moon and the use of the nodes of the moon in the West as well. Then in uh, part two, we will be looking at specific ways um, the nodes of the moon in ancient astrology were used specifically in charts, starting to work into uh, the techniques and practices associated with them. And again, comparing and contrasting them with the way that they are mostly used in modern astrology on a technical or craft-based level. Then in part three, we'll be talking about, now, if you jive with the ancient view, how can you use this in practices today? We'll be working with charts uh, in the third session and telling you how you can read the nodes in your own chart or in other people's charts or implement a more traditional use of the nodes in your practice if you already have one. So that's how the series is laid out. I think it's going to be really fun. I invite you know everyone to be a part of it. While I will argue, like I said, for the traditional philosophy and techniques and practices of ancient astrology with regard to the nodes of the moon. Um, I'm not going to do so in a way that is uh, condemning of, of anyone else. I want to say that so that everyone feels welcome. Um, because again, I got my, I cut my teeth on evolutionary astrology, you could say, and uh, practice it for four years, you know, saw thousands of clients practicing from an evolutionary perspective and don't look upon all of that as some sort of uh, boneheaded ignorance. And, you know, now I've found the way. Um, my philosophy has changed, my practice has changed, and uh, I believe for some good reasons. But uh, it's also my belief that there are many different ways and approaches uh, to doing astrology and that um, it's really the intent to help the soul grow uh, that, that matters, even if we have some really intense you know, philosophical differences at times. So I just say that so that everyone who you know, may already be coming from um, a more have a, having adopted a more evolutionary perspective on the nodes of the moon could feel welcome to come and learn about this traditional perspective. And, you know, like I said, if nothing else, just come away feeling like you have a, a, a broader and more full-bodied understanding of the history of this topic in astrology, which I think is completely fascinating. And like I said, it's one of the topics that probably changed my life and my astrology practice the most um, over the past 10 years. So anyway, um, that's what I've got for you guys. I hope to see you there. The cost, I will show you how to register now. The cost is $150 for all three weeks. You get all three of the talks um, sent to you if you can't make it live, or you can have replays of them anyway. Everyone gets to keep them if they'd like, along with the lecture notes. And um, it, you can register on my website. If you go to the events page tab, you will see a little box to fill in your name. After you've purchased the course, uh, you just enter your name into that. Uh, particular field. So that is what I've got. I hope to see some of you there. We start Thursday night. I'm really looking forward to it. And um, if you have any questions at all, feel free to hit up the comments section or send me an email at nightlightastrology at gmail.com. Okay, take care. See you soon. Bye.